Welcome everyone to today's webinar, Benefits of Scaling Your Outpatient Pharmacy Operations Through Telepharmacy, sponsored by Telepharm, a Cardinal Health Company. I am Alia Pavla with Becker's Hospital Review. We will begin today's webinar with a presentation and we'll have time at the end of the hour for a question and answer session. You can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar by typing them into your control panel in the space labeled enter a question for staff and clicking send. We are looking forward to hearing your questions. Additionally, in about a week following the webinar, we will be sending you a copy of the presentation to the email you used to register. At this time, it is now my pleasure to start today's webinar by introducing our presenters. Adam Chesler is currently the Director of Regulatory Affairs for Cardinal Health and has more than 15 years of experience in pharmacy, including positions as VP of Operations for Telefarm, Director of Strategic Alliances for PTCB, and manager roles with Walgreens and Target. Adam was appointed to the Texas State Board of Pharmacy Task Force on Pharmacy Technician Practice, the Texas eHealth Committee, and has testified before state legislators in support of advancing the pharmacy profession. He is a graduate of the University of Miami with a bachelor's degree in health science and also earned a doctorate degree in pharmacy from the University of Texas. Ibrahim Abru Arquab is the Director of Specialty Pharmacy Operations for Aurora Pharmacy. He manages their central fill, mail order, specialty, and telepharmacy operations. Ibrahim has been instrumental in managing Aurora's telepharmacy program, which includes the hub pharmacy and 16 remote prescription dispensing centers. Prior to his role at Aurora, he served as pharmacist and pharmacy manager for Walmart. Adam, I'll now turn the floor over to you. Thanks, Aaliyah. I appreciate that. I want to thank everybody for joining today. Uh, we're going to cover a couple topics. We'll start by talking about what is telepharmacy, move into a little bit about how to implement telepharmacy in your organization, and then end with a quick fireside chat with one of the largest telepharmacy operations, uh, speaking with Ibrahim. So Cardinal Health offers a couple of telepharmacy solutions, and there's a couple of different ways to look at telepharmacy. One of them is that remote order entry review where you can have a pharmacist reviewing uh, your orders from a remote location if you don't have them on site. There's medication order management, which allows uh, all medication orders to be scanned into a single web-based application. There's remote counseling, which we're seeing a lot with patients being able to, to get a consultation from a pharmacist at a remote location, whether it be bedside or, or whether it be somewhere with a Medicare uh, giving a diabetic consultation. But what we're going to talk about today is retail telepharmacy and, and how telepharmacy is being used to provide remote access uh, to a pharmacist at a location that currently doesn't have a pharmacist. The software solution that Cardinal Health uh, offers is called Telepharm. It's a full service software solution. When I say full service, it basically uh, assists from every phase along the process, from the regulatory phase to getting approval, to your implementation and training to make sure the staff is able to use it and, and the software is set up correctly. There's an ongoing support with a live chat, and we even help locate additional sites that may, may be potential good locations for expansion. It's a fully HIPAA compliant software, and it exists in over 150 telepharmacies across the United States. What does that look like when we say uh, exists in over 150 pharmacies? It, it really fits seamlessly into your workflow. Talk through the way the a telepharmacy works. A patient enters a prescription or it gets ERX over and the technician enters all the data. What this is, is a pharmacist, we're looking at that definition of supervision and, and you no longer have to stand next to your technician in order to supervise them. You're using audio visual technology to supervise them instead. So the prescription data gets entered, the pharmacist then verifies it to make sure it's entered correctly. They do this from a remote location. Uh, initials are kept throughout this entire process. The technician then fills the prescription like they do today. Again, those images are verified from a pharmacist or remote location to make sure it's filled correctly. And then the prescription before it gets sold, uh, there's a block on it, so the pharmacist has to do a consultation with the patient. Uh, they do a face-to-face, -face, HIPAA secure, compliant consultation with the patient cover everything they need to cover, and then the prescription is ready to be sold, uh, just like it is in the traditional pharmacy today. And the big difference in pharmacy and telepharmacy today is when it first started, it was live video. It was a one-to-one -one solution where a pharmacist had to be in front of a camera and the technician had to be in front of a camera or the, the patient had to be in front of the camera. And it was just talking across that camera and you had the hope that you had that, that 
connection. Uh, nowadays, and telepharm's model is an any-to-any -any infrastructure. So you can have one telepharmacy that's overseen by multiple pharmacies, which allows whatever pharmacist is free at that moment to help take care of the patient. Or you can have one pharmacy overseeing multiple telepharmacies where one pharmacist is able to cover uh, three locations that would not have been able to support one full-time pharmacist in each location. But when you spread it across the three locations, the pharmacist services are able to be utilized across all of them. Really helps you maximize your resources and expand your pharmacy footprint. And the way this is achieved through telepharmacy is through what we like to call a smart, smart workflow. Uh, what that does is it triages your patients as they come in. It fits in seamlessly with your current pharmacy management system. They integrate with each other. And as a patient is needed or if they're in, they're, they can move up the queue as they're necessary, any pharmacist at any location can pull patients out of the queue and start reviewing prescription, prescriptions or giving consultations. Uh, initials are kept at each step of the process and, and records are kept of how long everybody is in each, each part of that area. And that smart workflow really allows you to optimize your productivity, your productivity across all of your locations. And that's just some of the benefits of telepharmacy. By doing this, uh, I like to say anywhere you've ever wanted to have a pharmacist, telepharmacy really allows you to put one. Every location you've looked at and said, man, a pharmacist would be great there, but it just doesn't make fiscal sense. Uh, you can now do that through telepharmacy. It improves patient adherence, and, and not only improves just patient adherence, but it will improve patient outcomes and decrease readmissions by allowing you to dispense medications at the point of care. That collaborative staffing model, model allows you to maximize your resources when your pharmacists are taking care of uh, one thing. It allows another pharmacist to really step in and help out that pharmacist and split those that time across the board so nobody's waiting. Everything moves a lot faster and easier. Definitely helps you combat those DIR fees and declining reimbursements. Overall, it's a safe, secure, cost-effective way to expand your pharmacy operation, uh, and it just gives you a way to compete. And, and again, it, I know we say it repeatedly, but telepharmacy really allows you to scale your business, allows you to put a, a pharmacist anywhere you've ever said, I'd love to have a pharmacist. We're seeing it used uh, in HIV clinics where the current, they may see 20 patients a day, and the current way they, they perform their operations is they give the patient a prescription. They may go to a big box pharmacy to get a fill, get a consultation from a non-residency trained pharmacist. Uh, it's a disease with a huge stigma. You have patients all around you listening in, and the patient may not get their prescription filled in the first place. So we, we have customers putting telepharmacies in the HIV clinics. Uh, they're able to oversee that entire process, send the patient home with the medication at discharge, provide a residency, train pharmacist consultation to make sure the patient is taking their medication, getting well, reducing readmissions, and improving their, their outcomes of therapy. Uh, but it even expands more than that. Think about patients that may take two buses to get to one of your clinics, and then they're required to take two more buses to go get to the pharmacy to fill their prescriptions. They may not be getting them filled. Uh, patients with mental health, where you're sending them home with a prescription and that you're extremely concerned that they're going to follow through and fill that prescription. And if they don't, they might end up back in your clinic. Uh, language barriers, allowing pharmacists to, with, that speak languages to communicate across the entire organization. After hours care, urgent care clinics to provide that 24 hour discharge to patients with medications. And even out to bedside delivery, we have some customers who are using this where they give the patient a tablet before they get discharged, and a pharmacist goes through every medication the patient's going home with, talks about their potential side effects, and then they're able to discharge them with bedside delivery for the medication. So, overall, telepharmacy really does allow you to put that pharmacist anywhere you've wanted to. And before we go too much into detail uh, with that, we're going to have a quick chat with Ibrahim uh, at Aurora Pharmacy. Ibrahim, thanks for joining us today. Sure, hi. Ed. So we'll just kind of jump right in. Can you tell us from a high level what Aurora's pharmacy operation looks like? Yeah, sure. So Advocate Aurora Health is a large health system that believes in the importance of integrated medical services and accessibility. Uh, so pharmacy services are in the heart of those medical services that we provide to our patients in Wisconsin and in Illinois. Aurora Pharmacy operates a large and robust central fill and mail order operation. We have a URAC and ACHC accredited specialty pharmacy. We have a fairly large compounding pharmacy. We have inpatient central order verification. We also run a packaging center. We offer different kinds of inpatient pharmacy services. We have ambulatory pharmacy services embedded within our clinics. We run on the retail side, 47 retail pharmacies, and I have a correction of the total number of telepharmacies 
because that number keep changing uh, every month. Now we have 21 telepharmacies. We, in Aurora Advocate, we call them remote dispensing sites. That's the legal name in Wisconsin. And we have a remote dispensing hub, which is the supervising pharmacy. So Adam, in a Adam, nutshell, you that's, that's the, uh, the overall operation of Aurora Pharmacy. Great, uh, it sounds like quite a large operation you got going there. Can you kind of talk to us about what led to your decision to implement telepharmacy into your business? Sure, good question, Adam. So as part of our organization goal to provide comprehensive medical services, Aurora reviewed its options to provide community pharmacy services to its patients. The first Aurora retail pharmacy opened in 1992. The providers and patients kept asking for more outpatient pharmaceutical services. In some situation, we found that there is a reasonable need for pharmacy presence, but the volumes were not there to support a traditional pharmacy and the costs that come with that. Some clinics did not have any outpatient pharmacy within miles, and that was a burden on our patient that we need to find a solution for. In 2011, we decided to go with the telepharmacy model. It was the most reasonable solution to meet the needs at a reasonable cost. The basic idea is to have one to two pharmacy technicians operate a telepharmacy, while one pharmacist at the supervising pharmacy oversees several telepharmacies at the same time. We converted during the years some low volume pharmacies into telepharmacies and opened some brand new ones. As I said, in July 2000, in 2011, we opened the first telepharmacy. Tomorrow, we will open our uh, uh, we'll open a new telepharmacy, and that will bring the total to 21 telepharmacies spread through over the Aurora map in southeast Wisconsin. How, how has this affected the overall Aurora's organization? That was extremely important to our ability to provide service to many of our patients. As I said earlier, many of our patients would not have access to any retail pharmacy within miles. Aurora Pharmacy come with several advantages to our patients. We have the same medical record with our providers, and that has a tremendous amount of benefits to our patients. That's quite impressive. Uh, so you're actually one of the few customers who've built their own telepharmacy solution, but then decided to implement telepharm at a later date. Can you talk to us about that decision and how it's impacted your business? Yeah, sure. So in 2011, telepharmacy was a new application fairly, and we did not find any software that can meet our workflow needs. So we have to figure out a way of delivering the service without uh, the presence of uh, a dedicated uh, telepharmacy uh, application. So we, we used a screen sharing technology and video conferencing equipment. The solution was reliable, but we had some limitations with that. The biggest issue was the need to have a one-to-one -one communication between pharmacist and technician. We had to have an available pharmacist and an available free technician to talk to each other to be able to check the medication first. Then the technician has to call the pharmacist who has to be free to let them know that we have a patient waiting for them so they can bring up their medical records then generate the call again to the patient uh, to do the counseling. That was very limiting. So the video conferencing equipment did not integrate with our pharmacy processing system. That's why we had to do two calls for the consultation. Limited functionality did not optimize our workflow. We were limited by the number of prescription we can do because of that one-to-one -one communication limitation. We were, it was very difficult for us to scale. That's why we started looking for a new solution. And in November 2015, we, uh, in, uh, we started our work with uh, Telefarm. We still continue to have our old system as backup, as you see in the slide in the left image, we still have that video conferencing equipment, but we rarely use it. We depend solely on Telefarm right now to run our operations. So I imagine some of your pharmacists were a little apprehensive when you first started telepharmacy. How did you educate your pharmacists on what telepharmacy is and why it's important? Oh yeah, it was very challenging in the beginning. Some employees were worried about losing their jobs. 
And that's the first thing you will hear from your team that you have to be ready for. Luckily, in our case, we did not, nobody lost their job. I would argue even that we created new jobs with the telepharmacy operation because in some location there was no way that we will open a traditional pharmacy, but we opened uh, telepharmacy, hired a couple of technicians, and in some occasion we needed to add pharmacists at the remote dispensing hub. Uh, so that we didn't, and that was the biggest concern that our employees was uh, thinking of when we started this telepharmacy operation. Telef we have to keep in mind that telepharmacy workflow represents a significant change from traditional retail pharmacy. Pharmacists felt that they are losing control, while technicians thought that they are, were asked to do more than what they should. It was extremely important for our success to create a clear and detailed operational workflow. Training was also very important. Some skills like practicing eye contact, speaking volume, over video for video consult consulting was very important to our success. When you hire for those positions, you need to have a pharmacist who's ready to trust other team members and able to adapt to the new technology. The whole goal is to capitalize on the human potential. We need every employee, pharmacist and technician to be able to practice to the top of their license within the legal boundaries. So since you were able to not only retain jobs, but create jobs, can you kind of talk through the staffing model of your telepharmacies and let us know what that looks like? Oh yeah, of course. So usually we have one, sometimes two uh, remote dispensing technician in each location. And to be clear with all our guests, uh, we classify those uh, technicians two base grade above other technicians because we have to acknowledge the extra tasks that they have to do when you compare them to regular technicians in a retail pharmacy. At the remote dispensing hub, we have five to six pharmacists depending on the number of telepharmacies and depending on the legal requirement in regard to pharmacist technician ratio, we have to maintain that. We assign about four stores to each pharmacist to address specific needs, for example, doctor patient calls, prescription transfers, or other tasks like that. The pharmacists work on a shared clinical uh, review queue and consultation queue. Any pharmacist can verify and counsel for any of the telepharmacies. If a patient needs to talk to a pharmacist for a general recommendation, for example, like OTC question or something like that, the technician can generate a call to the hub and any available pharmacist can answer. In our telepharmacies, we dispense all different classes of medications, including C2s, REMS medications, compounded medications. Our telepharmacy team meets their medication therapy management goals, for example. Within our practice, we have the pharmacists in charge conduct monthly visits to make sure that we, everything within legal requirement. We have uh, three remote dispensing technician supervisors that work closely with their technicians. Um, the one thing that I want to say in regard to our operation that you do not, if you're thinking about starting a telepharmacy operation, you do not need to have a dedicated hub or supervising pharmacy uh, to run the, the telepharmacy operation. In our case, because we have a large number of telepharmacies, we feel that we have a need to have a dedicated hub uh, to be the supervising pharmacy. Our hub pharmacy is closed location. It's not open for uh, customers, we don't store any medication there. It's legally a pharmacy, but we don't have any medications and we only do the telepharmacy operation from there. I saw other system, other systems who have used some of their pharmacies as the supervising pharmacy and they run the other telepharmacies from that pharmacy. So that's also possible for the anyone considering opening a telepharmacy. So I heard you mention in there that your remote dispensing technicians are, are considered a great hire and that they're an advanced kind of role of the technician. What's been your experience like with hiring technicians for these locations? Finding the right technician to work in a telepharmacy is extremely important. They need to have the right set of skills to be able to manage their store. That's extremely important to keep in mind. A technician, a remote dispensing technician, a telepharmacy technician runs the stores operation. They deal with patients, vendors, they control your inventory, they fulfill all other pharmacy tasks. Uh, they have to be skilled, they have to be well trained, and they have to be supported, and that's very important. And that's why we have the remote dispensing 
technician supervisors because in some of those remote stores you have one technician working the whole day every day they feel lonely or not supported or away from management that can be a problem for many people so that's why we created the remote dispensing technician supervisor position of course you have to meet uh, an illegal requirement in your state in the state of wisconsin they have to be 18 years uh, of old of age and they have to have high school diploma and 1500 hours in the lot of pharmacy technician experience in the last three years aurora and that's only our requirement added certification as a requirement for for pharmacy technicians what about your patients what do they think about the telepharmacy with all honestly we notice a generally positive reaction to new telepharmacies and i underline new telepharmacies Clinics and patients are usually happy to have outpatient pharmacy services that they needed. We make sure that to onboard the clinical staff and providers and make sure that they are familiar with the concept of telepharmacy. It is harder when we convert a traditional pharmacy into a telepharmacy. Some providers and patients might be skeptical of that change. They sometimes they do not like losing their local pharmacists, but we did that so many times. We know now by experience that the negative reaction usually wears off in a few months when they find that the telepharmacy services actually provide all the services that they expect from a regular pharmacy. Uh, we did some marketing survey uh, some years ago with our patients and patients actually rank telepharmacies better than traditional pharmacies. And the best thing they liked about the service in telepharmacy is faster service. Keep in mind, in telepharmacy operation, we are using five to six available pharmacists to check your prescription, while in any traditional pharmacy, you might have one or two. So I can with very high confidence say that service in telepharmacy is much faster than traditional pharmacy. Our pharmacists in the hub, they only do their clinical review and product verification and counseling patients. They don't have to worry about any other task that a regular pharmacist in a traditional pharmacy have to worry about. So I can't imagine it's been all sunshine and rainbows the whole time. Uh, what kind of challenges did you overcome when opening your telepharmacies? And what lessons did you learn that you recommend for people thinking about starting a telepharmacy operation? Great question. Uh, experience opening a telepharmacy is not so different from opening a traditional pharmacy. If you walk into any of our uh, telepharmacies, uh, you can't tell if that's not a regular pharmacy, except for the fact that you will not find a pharmacist on site. That's the only difference uh, when you walk into that telepharmacy. So it's mainly the same experience when you open a traditional pharmacy. Uh, challenging things is to hire the right technician and pharmacist and train them well, ensure that you have responsibilities clear between pharmacist and technicians. You have to review your state uh, law and regulations. You need to spend time explaining the concept to the key stakeholders, clinical leaderships, clinical team, pharmacy teams, your patients, if you are converting a pharmacy into a telepharmacy, let them know what's gonna change, how it's gonna affect them, uh, what they should expect uh, by moving a pharmacy into telepharmacy or opening a brand new telepharmacy. One word of advice I would tell everyone, do not underestimate the cost of opening and running a telepharmacy. Great, thanks. Uh, so what do you guys have planned next for telepharmacy? As I said, we are opening a new telepharmacy tomorrow. Uh, our philosophy now is uh, that we will always start with a telepharmacy and can convert it into a traditional pharmacy later on if we have enough volume. Because as I said, in our experience, it's much easier to start with telepharmacy and move it to a, a pharmacy if needed on going the other way around. It's usually more resistant if you go the other way around. We are in the process of opening a few more telepharmacies in the coming few months. Uh, and we see an opportunity to provide outpatient pharmacy services to legacy advocate patients in Illinois. I'm sure this is a question on a lot of people's minds, but can you discuss some of the procedures your team takes to ensure safety in a telepharmacy? That's the most common question we hear from providers and patients when we open a telepharmacy. And uh, I, I, I assure them that we have written policies and procedures for system operations, safety, security, accuracy, and access. 
We implement an ongoing quality assurance program. We monitor medication errors. We also keep track of loss or diversion of inventory. I sit in the quality assurance uh, committee for Aurora Pharmacy. And with high confidence, I can tell you, Adam, that medication errors or diversion is not any difference between telepharmacy and a regular pharmacy. I strongly think that having a telepharmacy operation does not increase uh, medication errors for our patients. A part of our procedure, we have the pharmacist in charge visit each telepharmacy monthly. It is a legal requirement in Wisconsin, for example. The pharmacist in, jar, in charge conducts a controlled substance inventory, ensures written policies and procedures are being followed. The pharmacist in charge verify that all locations follow state and federal laws. So I've got one more question for you before we open it up to the audience. What did your patients do before they had a telepharmacy in order to fill their prescriptions? Access was a big problem for our patients before we started the telepharmacy operation. If patient wanted to enjoy the benefit of a shared medical record between their provider and their pharmacy, they had to utilize an Aurora pharmacy. They have to drive to the closest Aurora pharmacy, sometimes 10, 15 miles to get to one. Their other option would be to utilize the Aurora mail order pharmacy. But having 21 telepharmacies all across the system has definitely improved our patient access to outpatient pharmacy services. Great. Well, I appreciate it. I could keep asking the questions all day, but I see a lot coming across and I want to make sure we leave enough time for the audience. So, Aliyah, can we open it up for questions from the crowd? Awesome. Thank you, Adam and Abraham, for that fantastic presentation. We will now begin today's question and answer session. Please submit any questions you have by typing them into your control panel in the space labeled Enter a Question for Staff and clicking Send. We will try to get through as many questions as we have time for. And so far, we've had tons of great questions coming in, so we will just get started. The first audience member asks, is telepharmy, telepharmacy approved in my state? That's a great question. Uh, I'm not, I, I can't run through all the, the states right now over here, so I strongly encourage you to reach out if you wanna contact us through the email on the screen. Uh, we're happy to answer your question on a state-by-state -state, uh, basis, but um, there's 24 states that currently have very, very um, adaptable telepharmacy regulations, and the number is increasing every single day. Great. Thank you for clarifying that and providing a link. Uh, the next audience member wants to know what the implementation process looks like. Are we talking about the telepharm software or the telepharmacy in general? I think the telepharm software. Abraham, do you want to, you can talk about your experience or I can talk sure, yeah. general. So uh, we started our work with telepharm in, as I said, in 2015. You have to make sure that telepharm software does an excellent job integrated with integrating with so many uh, pharmacy management system. When we started, we had a legacy PDX old pharmacy processing system, and Telepharm was able to integrate with that with no issues. And when we converted into Epic Wello ambulatory uh, software, Telepharm was also able to integrate with that uh, uh, software. So it's extremely important for you to go through the, all the IT requirements for your whatever pharmacy system that you use to integrate with Telepharm. Training was extremely important. Telepharm offered us some significant uh, resources to train our technicians and pharmacists on the capability of using uh, Telepharm. I would tell you right uh, uh, with honesty that uh, utilizing Telepharm uh, software is extremely easy, straightforward. Any person familiar with, uh, with the computers and softwares should be able to handle it uh, with very easy. It makes sense. Uh, they implement okay. upgrades all the time, which makes sense, and they respond to our request uh, fairly fast. Thank you. I feel like there's not too much to add to that at all. Uh, so we, we Telefarm definitely provides the on-site um, training. We'll come out on-site. We'll set up the software and the hardware to make sure everything works. Uh, there's no additional charge for the hardware over what the cost is on Amazon. It's the same exact price as it is online. 
Uh, we help with the regulatory process, to, so we'll have sample policies and procedures for you to use. Uh, we have a live chat that's active at all times, and there's always somebody available to talk to you, and we're able to, to get into your software. So we try to help throughout every step of that process the entire time. Great. That is super helpful to understand. Um, as a follow-up question, one audience member wants to know what are some of the legal challenges while implementing something like a telepharmacy? It's a, another great question. It's a very broad question. Uh, the biggest legal challenge we really run into is, is it legal in the state? There's a lot of states are, that are looking at the definition, the old definition of supervision and saying, Supervision requires you to stand next to a, a pharmacy technician in order to supervise them. And we're really seeing a huge trend across the United States of you can supervise somebody through audio visual technology. You can still see everything they're doing. As the pharmacist improves their clinical scope and starts taking care of patients, um, they're not always standing next to that technician. So it's kind of a, a change in that process, but that's really been our largest legal concerns right now. Uh, other than that, it operates just like a traditional pharmacy. Everything else, uh, all the other laws for a traditional pharmacy or a standard pharmacy are still in place. Every scope of practice is still exactly the same. Every check and balance is still there. So the, really the biggest legal challenge in, is that, that definition of uh, remote supervision. Great. Thank you for that very informative response. Uh, the next question we have is about how this uh, works with EHRs. One audience member would like to know if this integrates with EPIC. I can uh, answer that since we use EPIC uh, ambulatory uh, software, it does integrate with that in a really beautiful way. So if you come to my hub pharmacy, you will see two screens in front of our pharmacist. One screen is Willow ambulatory and the other screen is Telefarm. The pharmacist will first do their clinical review work in uh, Willow, in EBEC, and they will do the product verification in uh, Telefarm. Uh, when we do consultation with the patient and we receive the call, I, I accept the call without even knowing who's calling me. But when I answer and accept the call, I will get all the patient information. I will see what medication they are picking. I will have, and that's in Telefarm, and that's how integrated it is into EBIC. And as I said, even our old software, we had the same features. So I will see any clinical notes that the verifying pharmacist left for me. I'll see medication, how they use it. Uh, I will see their medical records if I need to. So it's, I would say it's fairly integrated with, uh, with Telefarm. Awesome, thank you. Uh, the next question I'm going to direct towards Adam. One audience member wants to know how much this costs. <laughs> uh, so the, the cost is a sliding scale based on usage. I uh, can't give an exact number. Again, I would recommend you reach out to us over, the, over that email that's on there. We're happy to give you guys some information based on your exact platform. I can say it's significantly uh, less than a hardware solution. Uh, it's, it's significantly less than having a full-time pharmacist on site. Great, thank you. Um, another audience wants to know kind of the double checks. So they're asking beside, besides pictures, is there another double check like barcode scanning in this feature? Yep, so we have, um, there, there's a couple of safety and security checks throughout the process. There's initial verification, so anybody who touches a prescription any step of the process, their initials are recorded. There's barcode scanning required for filling a prescription. Uh, we're even working on technology that, that may be able to recognize the tablet as it's moving through the process to make sure it's correct. Uh, there's multiple checks and, and storage of the data. Well, we store it out in the cloud, so you'll have access to your data for, um, right now we have it set infinitely, but most states require only nine nine years, and we make sure we abide by that. Ibrahim, is there any other checks you want to add in there? Actually, what we Telefarm offers that you describe is added to what our pharmacy management system is offering. Also, uh, I would add, for example, that uh, all the pictures, the images that we take in Telefarm are stored there forever. 
So whenever there a patient, for example, and we do dispense, for example, C2 medications. And if a patient call me saying that I received 30 rather than 60 tablets, I can go back to the images and verify that if we dispense 30 or 60 or 90 or whatever number. Uh, drug drug interactions are being checked in telepharm, uh, just like it's being checked in our pharmacy processing system. Uh, scanning is a great feature that we have in telepharm. In Aurora, we enforce scanning capabilities within telepharm. We ask our pharmacists to reject a prescription if telepharm is showing me that the technician skipped scanning uh, the stock bottle. Great. Thank you again for uh, clarifying that for our audience. Another audience member, I know, Ibrahim, you already touched on this a bit, but they were wondering if you could kind of summarize key challenges in setting up a telepharmacy. I can't speak for every state, but in Wisconsin, honestly, it's uh, the, uh, the operation itself is just like opening a regular pharmacy. Legally, it's even easier because in Wisconsin, I only have to notify the state board within 30 days. Uh, it's not considered a pharmacy, so we don't go through the self-inspection. We don't go through the lengthy process of opening, uh, of opening a regular pharmacy. Uh, you need to get uh, DEA number, NBI number, all what you need to build insurance and fill controlled medications. Uh, after doing this for a few years now, our biggest struggle is with finding the right people who can staff those sites. Uh, other thing is when you convert a pharmacy into telepharmacy, that's that's challenging in the beginning. Great, thank you so much for kind of adding and summarizing for us. Another audience member is wants a little bit of clarification on Teleform. So Adam, I'm gonna direct this one to you. One audience member asks, are you able to use your existing prescription processing software and is Telefarm just the communication platform? Uh, it's, it's, I wouldn't say it's just a communication platform. Uh, it really does integrate in that software. So to answer the first question, yes. Uh, Telefarm integrates with almost all pharmacy management systems. Uh, I'd say 100% of the most widely used ones, or maybe one or two of the, the smaller used ones that we may not integrate with at this time, but it integrates with your software where they have that communication back and forth. Uh, but Telefarm does a lot more. It has that HIPAA secure uh, connection. It's not just a communication software between the two, as Ibrahim alluded to. It stores images, uh, transfer those images uh, and prescriptions throughout the two systems. So it's more of a um, connection platform that really allows your pharmacy, man pharmacy management system to have the tools to let you provide um, telepharmacy services. Thank you. I think of it more as a, think of it more as a workflow, workflow platform and a communication tool. Great, thank you for clarifying it for that audience member. Uh, the next audience member is wondering if they can use this to load balance PV2 between stores. Yep, absolutely. We see a lot of people using that for that exact reason. Uh, that'll allow you, and for those who are kind of need a little more clarification, uh, PV2 would be that second pharmacist check uh, that the pharmacist is involved in. We think the first pharmacist check is the uh, data entry. The second pharmacy check is the prescription fill. So when you do that, that second pharmacist check, um, if you have a pharmacist who's counseling a patient or out doing some kind of clinical service, that second check ends up getting backed up. When people implement the Telepharm software into their workflow, it allows them to have a pharmacist at another location do that second pharmacist check, uh, which allows, it keeps that, that workflow from backing up at that one location so the pharmacist feels free to provide a better, longer consultation for the patient. Uh, provide those clinical services that they want to without having that feeling or need to rush back to check prescriptions. Awesome. That is so helpful to understand. I'm going to move on to the next question. And this audience member wants to know, do technicians dispense controlled medications as well? And kind of going off of that, how do you maintain inventory control? Uh, I can answer that, Adam. Yes, they do. If you notice in the image that we have to one of our pharmacists, 
uh, in that image, he was uh, actually checking a C2 prescription. I can tell because we have a counting tray on the image. So if we are dispensing, let's say 90 tablets of hydrocodone, the technicians in the remote dispensing site and the telepharmacy will put them in the counting tray, will take an image. So by that, the pharmacist can verify the integrity of the medication that we are actually dispensing hydrocodone and the pharmacist can verify uh, that we are uh, dispensing 90 tablets the way it should be. Uh, we do, uh, the software doesn't, not telepharm, our pharmacy, uh, pharmacy the well ambulatory system does integrate with B BDMB. Uh, we check on every prescription. It's, uh, we take an image that we ask the technician to take an image of the BDMB usage and send it to the pharmacist, which makes the operation much faster. There's only one state that does not allow uh, controlled substances in a telepharmacy. Awesome. Thank you for answering that for our audience member. One of our audience members is from North Carolina, and he said that their board has not necessarily endorsed this practice at this time. But he is wondering if how receptive this type of service is by many boards of pharmacy. Uh, I, I'll jump in this one. I think most boards of pharmacy are coming around to the idea, uh, as we kind of alluded to earlier, each state has an idea of what this looks like in their state. So it's a little bit different in every state. Uh, regarding North Carolina, I highly recommend you talk to your pharmacy association. They're definitely uh, looking at the topic right now. And we're, we're involved in North Carolina and having discussions with them as well. But we're seeing more and more states taking this on every day. Uh, it's becoming a, a huge topic, and I think everybody wants to get something on their books right now about how this is regulated. If you reach out and it's not allowed in your state, I think there's a huge opportunity to speak to your state board and let them know you're interested in it. A lot of people are, are moving forward with this because they're finding out more of the interest in it. Thank you. That's really interesting and helpful to understand. Um, the next question is regarding kind of the size of telepharmacy. One audience member wants to know, what is the size of your smallest telepharmacy? Abraham, I'll let you answer for yours, but I can answer yeah. out of our customers afterwards. It's the, it's the minimum requirement for the state board. You have to check with the state board. So we have to meet the minimum requirement uh, uh, for a pharmacy. Because the, the telepharmacy regulation in Wisconsin does not specify, but it only mentioned that you have to meet the, the pharmacy requirement in regard to what equipment you have to have in the pharmacy, uh, the size of telepharmacy. A thousand uh, square foot usually is a, a decent size. You can run within 700 to 800, but you have to check with your state regulations. Yeah, and I, I can tell you there are some states that don't have requirements on the size. Um, some of them do just require running water. Some of them don't even require that. We do have some customers who are in an exam room at a physician's clinic where they just cut the door in half. They have a very limited supply uh, of medications back there. Think of uh, like an ophthalmology clinic where they dispense maybe box medications um, after eye surgery, and they would just have a, an exam room with a door that's cut in half. They can open the top half of it. It's secure. They can lock it up at night, but it allows them to dispense medications from that location. So. Uh, Abraham really nailed it. It varies by your state, but we have seen some that are probably down to 100 square feet that are operating. Great. Thank you both for uh, answering that question. The next one I'm going to direct to Abraham. Um, can you please explain again how Aurora overcame the one-to-one -one communication limitation by implementing the Telefarm solution? Yeah, sure. So before we, the technician might have 10 prescriptions waiting to be checked. And we have used to assign one pharmacist to four sites. They cannot check with their one pharmacist until that pharmacist is free for them. Keep in mind, he's being or she being shared by four sites. And we give priority for uh, consultation calls. We give priority for patient waiting. So we might have 10, 15 prescriptions waiting Till you have at the same time that technician and that pharmacist available to check with each other. That was a huge big limitation for our uh, workflow. With Telepharm, the technician does not need to wait for the pharmacist. 
the pharmacist does not need, wait, wait, need to wait for the technician. Uh, I can, every prescription I receive as a technician, I take images in telephone and I'm done from my side. And the pharmacist, all the pharmacists now, not only one, the five to six pharmacists I have at the hub can work on the clinical review and the product verification in Telefarm as time allow for, for them and answer calls. What's beautiful about Telefarm is that you can set your priorities in Telefarm. So let's assume I received the prescription from my urgent care for amoxicillin. The patient is not there. So we give regular priority for that prescription. The second that patient walk into your clinic, the technician is able to, to click flag that prescription and the pharmacist will know immediately that this prescription is for a waiter and will come uh, top priority for their patients. So by this, any pharmacist available can check that prescription extremely fast. Any available pharmacist can receive that call from that store uh, to answer that patient question or consult them on their medication without the need to pre-arrange for that, as I mentioned earlier, because accepting the call will give me all the information I need. I hope that answered the question. Yeah, I think you did a great job answering that, Abraham. Uh, the next question I'm going to also direct to you because I know you touched on it a bit. But another audience member really wants to know if you have measured the differences in clinical outcomes between patients receiving telepharmacy versus on-site pharmacy. If you could just maybe explain a little bit more about that. I would say there is no difference between a regular pharmacy and uh, telepharmacy in the fact that uh, pharmacists are still checking every single uh, step of the way before dispensing that prescription. Uh, pharmacists are more dedicated in telepharmacy to just doing their clinical review and product verifications. Uh, they have different resources. We have telepharm as an extra resource to check our prescription and make sure that we have the right medication that we are dispensing for our patient or uh, to leave uh, relevant clinical notes and su suggest some consultation uh, 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 points to share with our patients. As I discussed, we meet immunization goals, MTM goals, Narcan goal for uh, narcotics now. We expect the same outcomes from our telepharmacies just like what we expect from our traditional pharmacies. Great, thank you for clarifying that. The next audience member wants to know how you know or prepare inventory that you need to have on hand at the various locations. Uh, that's you learn by experience. So we usually compare the closest pharmacy to that location with similar, uh, because in Wisconsin, telepharmacy has to be within a clinic. So we compare uh, within our telepharmacies or pharmacies, uh, whatever closest to that location uh, in regard to number of providers, specialties, and all that. We have advantage also in Aurora that we have a central fill. So that helps us also carry on a smaller volume of inventory uh, if we didn't have that service, because we know the majority of maintenance medication will be filled in those in central fill and sent to the store, so they don't have to stock those medications. You learn by experience. Uh, you have to be active about your inventory management. That's important. Uh, usually, telepharmacies are uh, low volume prescriptions, uh, so you have to make sure that you maintain a reasonable size of uh, inventory to make finance more uh, uh, reasonable and acceptable to your uh, leadership. Great, thank you for clarifying that as well. The next audience member wants to know if you use automated dispensing cabinets or if the medications are just on the shelves. We do not uh, uh, use any automated machines. Uh, it's regular medications on the shelves. Thank you for answering that. Uh, the next question is, how is productivity for pharmacists monitored? Uh, Telefarm comes with some uh, excellent reporting capabilities. We have reporting capabilities with uh, 
within uh, Willow Ambulatory, but uh, I get weekly reports from Telefarm that show me each pharmacist, and that was important for us to drive productivity. How many prescriptions they, re, uh, they verified, how many prescriptions they rejected, how many patient calls they received uh, on a weekly basis. So uh, that was a very uh, useful tool for us to, uh, to monitor productivity for our pharmacist. Great, thank you, Ibrahim. Uh, the next question is the last one that we're going to have time for today. And this audience member asks, are you seeing anyone use this in an SQHC? It's an easy one to answer, absolutely. Um. <laughs> awesome, thank uh, you for, yes. Thank you for that. So we're seeing, an, we're seeing an SQHCs, 340Bs, um, basically any type of, of clinic or facility. Awesome. Well, that is all we have time for today. I want to thank Adam, Ibrahim, and Telefarm for their excellent presentation and our audience for participating today. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we look forward to having you join us for future webinars.